So listen to this. I have this awesome new app idea that's gonna revolutionize the tech industry. But in order to build it, I first need to figure out my tech stack. Like many web applications, I need a rich front-end web interface, a simple back-end API service, and a high-scale database. Hmm, this sounds like a great use case for the mean stack. Howdy, my name's Doug Parker, and I'm an engineer on the Angular team at Google. I'm here today to show you how to build and deploy a mean stack application to Google Cloud. First of all, what is the mean stack? Mean is an acronym of a few web technologies which include MongoDB, a popular document database system, Express, a framework for implementing a JavaScript web server, Angular, a front-end framework for building rich and engaging web applications, and Node.js, a runtime for executing JavaScript outside the browser. With the mean stack, we have everything we need to build a compelling web experience. And I'm gonna use this superpower to build a new application which will take the online messaging space by storm. I call it Meaningful Tweets, my new social media platform where users can post their most uplifting and supportive content, helping each other just get through the day when we really need it the most. Users see a list of all tweets on the site and can post their own meaningful tweets to support others. So how are we gonna build this? Using the mean stack, we can develop this fully functioning high-scale web application with three tiers. The first tier is our front-end web application built with Angular. Users directly interact with this front-end to view and post tweets. The second tier is our back-end web server built with Express. The application requests tweet content from this server, which mediates access to the underlying database. The third tier is our Mongo database. This stores all the tweets in our application. Node.js lies underneath the whole stack. It supports the project's build, tooling, as well as runtime execution of both the front-end and back-end servers. Beyond the mean stack, we have a few additional technologies and patterns to help with the process. Cloud Build compiles and containerizes our application with minimal setup. Cloud Run deploys and executes these containers on a fully managed serverless platform, meaning I don't have to worry about provisioning nodes. MongoDB Atlas similarly provides a fully managed Mongo database, easily accessible from Google Cloud. We'll also be developing the whole project using a mono repository, meaning we'll have exactly one repository storing all our source code. This eases integration between the different projects and allows us to share common infrastructure. Now, to build the application. For the sake of time, I won't go step-by-step step through the whole process, but instead cover just the most important highlights of how to structure and deploy meaningful tweets. There's a GitHub repository set up with the final state and instructions on how to set it up in your cloud project. You can also look through the commit history to see all the details of each particular step. First, we'll generate the front end with the Angular CLI. We install it globally with NPM I'm using version 14 of the Angular CLI, the current latest. Then use ng-new with the create application false flag to create a new mono repository, which will host meaningful tweets. Within that mono repository, we use ng-generate to create a new Angular application. Lastly, we add Angular Universal, which automatically configures server-side rendering and gives improved performance. So I have a small front-end interface where users can create meaningful tweets and see a list of all posted tweets. Currently, everything is stored in memory on the client, so a refresh loses all the data, but shh, we'll fix it later. Now that I've so effortlessly built my front-end, let's deploy it to Google Cloud. Before we get too far, we'll need to make a couple minor changes to the application. First, we'll update npm start to run build SSR followed by serve SSR. Cloud Run will look at the package.json and execute npm start. This change makes sure Cloud Run executes the production build with server-side rendering. Second, we'll move our dev dependencies into regular dependencies and reinstall to update the lock file. Cloud Run doesn't install dev dependencies and we'll need them to build our Angular app. 
With that out of the way, we can start by visiting Cloud Console to make an application and create a new project called, you guessed it, Meaningful Tweets. Next, we'll need the G Cloud CLI tool to configure deployments for our application. Once installed, start by setting the G Cloud project to Meaningful Tweets. So all our future commands will apply to that project. Next, deploy the application via the gcloud run deploy command. This will set up a new service called frontend and deploy it based on the current source directory. You'll be prompted to enable some APIs like cloud build and cloud run. These are what make it possible to deploy without having to worry about containers or nodes. The configuration is fully inferred from my package.json file generated by the Angular CLI. If deployment fails, don't worry. You might just need to raise the memory limits to build your application. After the first attempted deployment, you'll, use, you'll see a new service in Cloud Console containing everything you need to configure your service. Go to edit and deploy a new revision and raise the memory capacity to two gigabytes. You might also wanna set the minimum instances to one just so you don't have to deal with cold starts while you're hacking in the cloud. Once the deployment succeeds, you can click the URL at the top of the service page to check out your app running in the cloud. We've now got the front end running and it's even server-side rendered with almost no additional effort. But all the data is currently stored client-side. It's lost as soon as I refresh the page or open a new tab. I can't share meaningful tweets if no one can see them. What we need is a shared backend server to manage the state between different users. So check out this new backend built with Express and TypeScript. I've added two endpoints, tweets new and tweets list. The former lets you post a new tweet while the latter lets you see all tweets. So how can we deploy this backend to Google Cloud? We're currently deploying just a front end service to Cloud Run. But now we'll need to deploy two services, our existing front end and a new backend. Since there's only one source repository, but two services, we need to tell Cloud Run which one we want to deploy for which service. We can do this by restructuring our package.json a little bit. To start, I updated my NPM scripts to consolidate all my front-end related functionality into NPM run front-end colon commands. These include the development server, build, test, and deploy commands. Next, I made a similar scripts for my backend to make local execution and testing easier. My favorite commands in here are the deploy scripts, which use gcloud run deploy. This way, I don't have to remember the exact arguments each time I push to production. On first run, the backend deploy script will set up a new backend service in the Cloud Console interface. Finally, it's time for the magic trick that lets us deploy two services from the same source repository. The trick is simple. Just update the start script to be npm run. This allows us to use npm start to run any script in this repository based on its given argument. For instance, npm start frontend dev will execute the, the frontend's development build, just like npm run frontend dev would do. Then in each Cloud Console service definition, we can add a container argument. This argument gets passed in to npm start, which means we can use it to pick which script to run. I set the front-end service to run the production front-end build, while the back-end service runs the production back-end build. Now I'm able to deploy two services from the same repository. So I've got my back-end hosted in the cloud. The next step is to get the front-end and back-end services talking to each other. Currently, the front end keeps all its data in memory when it really should be fetching from the back end. One non obvious challenge is that the front end needs to know what URL the back end is hosted at, which actually varies based on context. When running in production, it should fetch from the production back end URL in the cloud. But when running locally on my laptop, it should fetch from localhost to access the back end's development build. To do this, we can use Angular environments. Angular supports multiple build environments for your application and lets you customize environment-specific data for each. Find the environment.ts file under the front-end project, add a new property called backend origin, and set it to the localhost URL of the backend. 
This value is used for development builds. Next, make a similar change to the environment.prod.ts file, adding the same property now set to the production backend URL. This value is used for production builds. Fortunately, Google Cloud service URLs are stable, so we don't need to worry about setting up a domain name for our backend. Now, when we import from environment, we'll get the localhost URL in a dev build and that backend service URL in a production build. Multiple users can see the same meaningful tweets and traffic is starting to increase. Since these servers are deployed with Cloud Run, they can auto scale up to meet traffic demands. So my infrastructure scales with my needs. Only one problem. State is still stored in memory just on the front end, on the back end server. Five users on a single back end server works just fine. But as traffic increases and we get multiple back end servers, they aren't sharing the same tweets, meaning different users see different tweets. What we need is a database to store a global list of all tweets shared by all backend servers. Enter MongoDB. Mongo serves as the data storage layer of the mean stack and will host all our tweets. So how can we connect our backend to a Mongo database? We can update the backend service to use the MongoDB NPM package, which provides a comprehensive client library for working with a Mongo database. When a user saves a tweet, the backend will connect to the Mongo cluster and insert a tweet into the collection. When the user reads all tweets, the backend will similarly find all the tweets in that collection. As for where the database storing this information actually is, for now, I've just hard coded a localhost URL for the backend to connect to. We can test this by installing MongoDB from the website and running it locally by executing MongoD. By running the database in one terminal and the backend in another, they're able to easily connect with each other. Posting a tweet to the backend saves it into the database instead of storing it in memory. I can prove this by restarting the backend server without losing any data. Listing tweets still shows the tweet I posted before the restart, so the data must be stored in the database. So I've got my Mongo database working locally, but how can I deploy it to the cloud? To set up this database, I'll use MongoDB Atlas, a fully managed hosting solution for MongoDB. Visit the MongoDB website to create an account and make a new project called Meaningful Tweets. Then make a Mongo database cluster to host our tweets. We can pick between a few different pricing options, and there's even a free tier for low traffic workloads, which is a great way to try it out. I'll start there. Even though I know Meaningful Tweets is such a good idea, I'll definitely outgrow the free tier. Let's host it in Google Cloud, of course, and I'm in the United States, so we'll put the cluster there. Lastly, I'll name this cluster Tweets, since that's what it's going to be storing. Mongo then prompts to add a user for our service to authenticate with. I'll call this user backend since that's the service which will connect with this user. Generate a password and copy it for later. We'll need that in just a bit. Now we have a brand new fully managed Mongo database hosted in the cloud. Just like how the front end needed to pick between the development and production backends, we'll also need to pick between development and production databases. To make this configurable in the backend service, we'll remove the hard-coded localhost string. Instead, we'll set up the server to read the database connection string from an environment variable called MongoDB URI. We'll set this variable in production in just a moment. But if it's not set, we can assume the backend is being run locally and connect to the localhost database. We could also hard-code the production database connection string and its password in the server source code. However, this repository is open source, and doing so would leak this credential and associated user data to anyone looking at the code base. Only my code is allowed to accidentally delete the database. I can't allow just anybody to do that. To use the password securely in production, we'll set up Secret Manager, a service in Google Cloud for maintaining secrets, which integrates with Cloud Run. In Cloud Console, go to Security Secret Manager and enable the API. Then create a new secret called MongoDB prod URI, which will hold the production database connection string. To get this string, 
open MongoDB Atlas and click Connect. It'll ask what IP addresses we want to connect from. For simplicity, let's allow access from anywhere, though in a real app you might want to restrict to just the backend's API address for improved security. Finally, click Connect Your Application and copy the string. Paste this string into Secret Manager and include the password from earlier. You didn't copy over that now, did you? Secret Manager will store the string securely while also making it available to our services in Cloud Run. Then expose this secret as an environment variable and name that variable MongoDB URI. Since the backend is already set up to read this environment variable, I can just redeploy it and verify that everything is working. So let's give our production application a quick test. I can save and view tweets in my app, and they're now persisted across refreshes and different users. We can also confirm that tweets are stored in the database by browsing collections on the MongoDB website. This means our servers are fully stateless and we can auto scale them as much as we need to meet that traffic spike from earlier. Congratulations, we've now successfully developed a mean stack application and deployed it to Google Cloud. We have a local build for testing and iterative development with easy deployments to an integrated and fully managed production environment. One billion users, here we come. That's all I have time for today. But if you wanna keep going with this project, there are a number of cool improvements you can look into. More comprehensive build tooling like Bazel, NX, or TurboRepo would make it easier to build and develop locally, as well as share code between multiple projects in large repositories. Continuous integration setup can make sure tests pass and auto-deploy a new version of the service, so you don't have to think about deployment so much. It can also be helpful to set up a staging environment for pre-production testing. And you can always just add more services, a new front end hosting an internal dashboard of user metrics, a new back end to handle user profiles, more complex database schema to host all that data. The project structure can grow and scale as you need it. You can also integrate with countless Google Cloud APIs. Want to provide some automation to make sure meaningful tweets are actually meaningful? Connect the Cloud Natural Language API and get full sentiment analysis in minutes. Need to make sure your service stays reliable? Configure cloud monitoring to track your service across defined SLOs and alert when things go wrong. There's so many awesome features to explore. The only limit is your creativity. Check out the GitHub repository for full source code and instructions on how to deploy it to your own Google Cloud instance. Fork the repository, deploy it, and convert it into your own billion user idea. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for the most important part of the project, getting a domain name. Wait, you mean I could do my domain name on Google Cloud too?